The Eurasian beaver has been a British native mammal for at least 10,000 years. They were hunted to extinction in the British Isles 400 years ago. Since 1979, there has been a clear obligation under international law for European states to reintroduce native species that were lost due to human interference. The British government signed up to the Convention on Biological Diversity, 1992 which states that all parties should restore damaged ecosystems and that they must restore lost species. During these last 30 years after signing up to that agreement, Britain has yet to reintroduce any mammals. Chris Jones leads the River and Beaver Restoration Programme for the Beaver Trust in Cornwall. OK, I'm Chris Jones. I'm a director of Beaver Trust and the farm who owns this uh, area of land here. Um, I just want to talk very quickly about where we've been with getting beaver licences and, and where we are now. Uh, so this um, fence here uh, is part of an enclosure which uh, covers about five acres and it's where we released our beavers in 2017. At that point we didn't need a licence to do that. We'd originally wanted to just let beavers go in the area but we were not allowed to do that because you had to have a licence and the licence was virtually impossible to get then. So uh, we decided to do this. And the great advantage of that for us was it enabled us to know where the beavers were and be able to measure the activity of the beavers in effect on the ecology and on the hydrology really, really well. So it's been a tremendous learning tool for us all. But there's just been a consultation by DEFRA on the idea of reintroducing beavers properly to the wild. And it's going to be a very different kettle of fish in terms of management and so on. Um, from what's happened up until now. I think the, uh, the real gap at the moment that we see is uh, DEFRA seem to be leaving it all to NGOs and private landowners to finance everything about that. Uh, but that's really another big story. Anything we say now is to a degree speculative because they haven't yet made up their mind what they're going to do. The consultation is over. There's going to be another period of reflection on, on the consultation. And then I imagine sometime uh, Later on next year, they'll be coming up with an actual uh, plan for what a, a new licensing system will look like. OK, one of the other impacts of beavers is uh, obviously that they cut trees down. Now, that is a great concern to some people. And indeed, uh, if we have trees of great value or sentimental uh, significance, we should be trying to protect them. It is a very, very simple thing to do. Uh, two main methods. One is to just paint a layer of mixture of glue and sand, PVA glue and sand, onto a tree. And that's happened to this one uh, here, up to at a metre height, so the beavers can't bite above it. And that tree, which was done three years ago, is now still very, very gritty when you feel it. And there is just no way that a beaver is going to bite into that. Um, it's cheap. It's unobtrusive and it's effective. Uh, and then if we look over my shoulder here, there's a couple of trees being wrapped in wire as well. Uh, and that's also a, a reasonably cheap option too. Um, we're not particularly attached to any of the trees here. We've just done this as a demonstration to show that it is perfectly easy and possible to protect trees. So you could say that if you're having trees that you want to protect or that you want to survive, if they're being taken out by beavers, you're volunteered for it by not doing that protection. Uh, one of the impacts that beavers inevitably have is that of flooding land. When we talk about impacts to farming and so on, we need to distinguish between different kinds of landscape. Rivers tend to be in areas which are fairly hilly, going from upland down into lowland, but with not very much really, really flat land next to rivers. There's some, but not, not so much. The impacts of beavers are flooding large areas of agricultural land, it's very unlikely to happen. There could be some localised instances, but really not very much. Whereas if we talk about the east, particularly East Anglia, uh, where we've got the Cambridgeshire Fens, Lincolnshire Fens and so on, where land is very, very flat and rivers are perched up behind flood banks, there's a very, very high chance that areas of land, of very, very valuable farmland, will get flooded. Uh, and so that says to me, we should have a management system 
that takes that into account so that uh, beavers in those areas uh, can be removed quickly. Uh, but also, we should have a reintroduction strategy, in my view, that does not bring beavers back to those particular rivers, simply because the uh, financial cost and the cost on food production will be too high. One of the impacts of farming on our riverscape is that of releasing nutrients from land into water. And this can have really bad effects on, on, on a number of water quality issues. Nitrates and phosphates are the main culprits, but also we get a lot of pathogens as well coming off farmland sometimes. And one of the effects of the beavers is to collect silt in their dam systems, which actually helps to clean the river up. I'll just show you how much silt we do uh, manage to get here. And the significance of this is that this is silt laden with pathogens and phosphates and nitrates, which otherwise would be going down to the oyster beds in Falmouth Bay. And it's a duty of the Environment Agency and water companies to keep our coastal waters clean. I think that they would be well advised to begin to look at beavers as being a very cheap solution for that. And also it helps to get farmers out of trouble too. And if we could just create buffers along our rivers where no farming, certainly no cultivation or chemistry is applied, say 20 or 30 metres beside the stream, this would go a great deal uh, along with beavers in them to really clean our rivers up. What we need to think about, I think, with bringing this animal back is the backdrop uh, of this taking place. And that backdrop is of climate and ecological change. Now we know with climate change, because we're already seeing it, we're going to see elevated temperatures and we're going to see much more erratic weather, uh, more frequent droughts, more frequent extreme rainfall events, uh, which can cause flooding. So to tackle the flooding first, we have shown conclusively on this site that the average of the discharge from it is half what it was during a rainfall event. Uh, and before the beavers arrive here, and that has got to be significant. But also, during drought, we've got a large reserve of water here, which is great for the wildlife, and also it's a, a water source that we can actually use to irrigate our land if we need to. And in 2018, when we had an incredible drought here, we were able to do that, and it was, it was a great benefit to us. 